Hi friends, it's Deanna here and today we're making the Treswell wrap dress and I am really excited about this one because it combines everything I love. Um, it's got the wrap style on the front and then um, it's got uh, the different types of skirt. Um, we've got the circle skirt, the half circle skirt and just the straight skirt which I love. Um, and actually I am doing the circle skirt today and uh, let's see that's it um, I have uh, I'll tell you kind of how to do the other ones if you're doing the other ones but I'm doing the circle skirt and I did not think about this I already cut out my circle skirt but I wanted to show you how to cut out your circle skirt and then I forgot and I cut it without showing you so I'm gonna tell you can you hear the thunder is thunder in here where I'm at anyway so uh, what you do to cut a circle skirt so we have um, we usually cut on the fold so this is my back I'm gonna show you with my back because it's that easy oh before I get started let me remind you about our fun fan giveaway that we do monthly $50 Elia Mag gift certificate all you have to do is um, make sure you subscribed subscribe if you haven't paused subscribe right now and comment below and let, let us know that you subscribe and that's all you have to do and you'll be entered and every month we pick a winner $50 alien magic certificate so yeah just saying you may want to go ahead and subscribe so you can be a winner okay so um okay so let me go ahead and over this again so for the circle skirt if it's just a half circle you will cut at the straight line, the solid line, and you would do it on the fold. But if it's a, a whole circle skirt, you will do it on the double fold. And what that means is when you grab your fabric and you fold it together to cut up a, a pattern piece, um, we make this fold line right here. So here's a fold line, right? Well, you want to put your skirt pattern right on top of it to see that the fold fit, that the skirt fits on the first fold. And then you're going to grab your fabric from the top and fold it right back down again. And that's the double fold. So now there's two folds right here and one fold up here. And you will position your skirt one fold, one of your fold signs up here and then the other one at the bottom. And then you would cut the top and then cut all the way around. And that is how you make a skirt on the double fold. Um, and that makes a circle skirt. So it's like a continuous circle. You don't have any seams, which is kind of great. Um, if you want that and it's a fuller um, skirt so it's a little bit heavier uh, so it is recommended that with that one you definitely use some clear elastic I am really bad and I'm not going to do it right now because I hate the feeling of clear elastic on me um, but um, if I feel like my skirt after I finish it if I feel my skirt is too heavy I might have to do the clear elastic on it afterwards but um, yes so let's see we're gonna get started the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our bodice front and I already did it to one side. We're going to uh, gather that little side piece. So here's my bodice, my front um, goes like this. Isn't this fabric amazing? And I'm going to gather right here at this edge. And all I'm doing is I'm grabbing a um, long stitch. Oh, my, uh, so the machine is not threaded for some reason. I'm doing a long stitch uh, and that is what I'm using to gather. Since it's just a tiny little bit of fabric, it should be fine to just do the gathering long straight stitch. That is what I did. And what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to go to, the, to one of the sides, the top one, and I'm just going to um, tie it together, tie like a little not right there just so it doesn't come apart sometimes when it's a small section of gathering um i found that if you don't like tie it down it, it might come apart when you're doing the sewing and it's so aggravating to me so i'll go ahead and um tie a knot at the ends so that way it doesn't come apart and not even a knot just like a you know a little tie just to make sure that it's gonna stay put. Okay, so now I've got both of mine um, gathered. 
So I'm going to put them right on top of each other, face up, because now I'm going to grab, sorry, let me view closer so you can see. I put the camera a little bit closer to me so you can kind of see more of the detail. Um, so I'm hoping this works out. Um, so here's my top right here and my shoulder seams are up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my back and I'm going to put it right on top of it and the shoulder seams, right on shoulder seams, right sides together. And we're going to sew those shoulder seams together. Do any of you suffer with uh, environmental allergies? I do. And I woke up this morning with like a side headache right here. Um, and sneezing. And I'm like, oh yeah, here it is. That's all right. I took some allergy medicine. I need to get some local honey. I know that that usually helps. Do you have any tr tips and tricks for seasonal allergies? All right, I'm gonna sew this shoulder seam. I know, it's not about sewing, but you all are such good helpers. You are amazing and give awesome tips, so I figured why not ask you all if you know any kind of home remedies. All right. And so I'm showing the other show that I am using um, my serger. But if you want to use a stretch stitch, you can use any kind of stretch stitch on your sewing machine, a lightning bolt stitch, a uh, zigzag stitch, any of those will work. In each should be good. So now that it's sewn at the shoulders, oh my goodness, look at this fabric. Now that it's shown at the shoulders, 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 the shoulders. I'm gonna grab my neckband. Let's see, sometimes my son will play with my chair and he'll lift it all the way up high. And then I'm like up, you know, like where am I? So I'm grabbing my neckband and I'm gonna fold it wrong sides together. Make sure when you're gonna steam that your iron is not too hot and not burn your fabric. I want to burn your beautiful fabric and we're going all the way down uh, making that memory uh, fold there well it's not just memory fold we need it folded for when we attach it so you want to make sure that it's nice and straight and you know what I've learned when I'm doing neck bands now before I sew my neck bands together which this one doesn't get sewn together because it's the wrap style um, but uh, I've learned that somebody posted a tip about doing um, steaming your neckband folded first before you sew it together. And I did that and it is like life changing. So great a tip. And so now I do that all the time, especially when you have like this fabric is great because it just it folds nicely. It's I think it's ITY. But um, some fabrics like cotton lycra that like roll. And so when you're trying to do a neck band and it's like, eh, I'm not gonna do it. It's good to do it beforehand. I'm going to go ahead and quarter my this um, neck band. Just meeting at the ends, going up to the top to the, uh, uh, what would be the back. And we're going to, I do a little clip. Um, just a tiny little bit, not enough that I'll see it when I sew it on. But just enough that um, I'll see it as I'm sewing. But I'll eat it, so it'll be fine. But uh, I just I like that because if my pin moves, then I still have my marks. Now I'm gonna go in the two sides. I'm bringing them into the middle, to that center pin. And these will be my quarters. So one edge is my one quarter, and then the other edge is my other quarter. Again, I'm just snipping a tad bit, just a tiny little bit, not very much at all. Um, but it's easy for when I move my pin out of the way, uh, I still have, I still know where I'm supposed to be at. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the bodice. I'm grabbing my bodice and I'm going to match the shoulder seams and I'm going to the back and that will be my back, uh, my center back. Obviously our front where our straps will end will be our front. Um, but to measure my quarters, I'm not gonna go from the shoulders because obviously the front is much longer than the shoulder. 
I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna bring the front right here to the to the side and I'm gonna go out to the side and that will be my one quarter right there and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and I'm just notching there you go my nail broke and it's catching on everything I need to file it down or cut it off one of the two my nails grow really fast and usually before I paint them I cut them down and then this time I'm like oh, I'm gonna try but then they like start fraying and then it like gets stuck on everything this is why I don't do long nails I don't know how some people do long nails I just can't do it can you do long nails do you like long nails okay so this is what we're gonna do we're gonna grab our neck band and we're gonna match it so here is our top which is our back so we're gonna match that right sides together with our neck. And then we're gonna go down and match where the other, where we made our little snippy right here. Because the reason why we're making snippies is because we're going to have to pull our neck band because it's gonna tighten it up and that'll give it like a, you know, like a closed up, you know, gathered look. Um, so you will have to pull a little bit on your neck band as you're sewing it on. So this is why we wanted to quarter it. It's not, it's not, um, the length of the neck, of the neck, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's why you want to quarter it because you want to make sure that it's all even or it won't look as nice, as crisp as it could. Are you loving this fabric or am I the only one who loves this bright type of fabric? I'm a very like just like a plain Jane. I love blacks, grays, whites. Um, but I am also, it is so funny because I'm also very whimsy. So like I go either, I go for like extremes. Like I like the basics and then I like the craziness. Like I don't. I don't know I'm not like just like okay I'm just gonna stick with this one thing I want everything I want the best of everything okay so here we are we're gonna sew this on and when I'm sewing a band I always put the band on top because it's the smaller part so I want to be able to see what I'm eating um, I don't want to start sewing and then you know I ate half my band so I'm gonna first I'm gonna get this started and I'm gonna pull where my I meet my quarter so I'm pulling that band a little bit and making sure that it's all even and then I'm gonna go ahead and sew. And with this other hand right here, my left hand since I'm right handed, I move my fabric and guide it with, with this hand as I'm as I'm sewing with this hand. And what I do is I stop at that quarter point and then I go back and grab. I use my uh, ring finger and my thumb to grab my fabric and then I use my uh, middle finger and my index finger my pointer index I don't know and I grab I, I grab my fabric higher up with those fingers and then I use this hand and I manipulate the fabric this is how I do all my bands Always make sure that you are um, making sure that all three layers are getting cut under your serger as you're doing this or your sewing. Because if they're not, then you're gonna have a gap. Which we can fix later, we can always fix it. But it's easier if you just make sure of it before then you will just have then you will just have a continuous line instead of having like you know little pieces of thread here and there which I dislike but I've had to do it before because I am very far from perfect okay 
So now that we are finished, we're gonna turn it around and look and make sure that all of the all of the thing uh, band is on right, and it is. And then we're gonna go ahead and steam, and um, you can steam it from the inside. Just um, just make sure it's steamed. Steaming, um, it's part of the job. It really is. It um, gives it a better look. It, it helps with any, sometimes you'll look and your, your shirt or whatever, your neckline looks a little bit ripply. Steaming goes a very, very long way to help with that. If you want to top stitch the neckband, you may. I do not like top stitching neckbands when I have something this beautiful. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, I do it with like sporty, um, things I will top stitch but when it's something that's like dressier I don't like to top stitch so now we're gonna go ahead and attach our sleeves so I'm gonna grab this out just like so and I'm gonna grab one of my sleeves and I'm going to clip the top before I open it up I'm going to clip my top to know where my center of my sleeve is let me do the same thing to the other one since I have it right here in front of me and I'm going to open it up and pin that center to the shoulder seam. And then I'm gonna go down to the side. I'm gonna go all the way down to the end, matching the sleeves right sides together. sides together. I'm going to do the same thing to the other sleeve. There's just something about sewing that is so therapeutic for me. Like even, like I said this morning, I woke up with a... a a uh, little bit of a allergy headache, allergy induced headache, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. And um, I mean, I did, I know I took medicine, but I start sewing and it makes things go away. Like it makes, it makes me feel so much better um, when I start sewing. There's just something about it. It's just calming and beautiful. And I just love creating um, something beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and sew that raw edge. Remember, right sides together. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start, start it up, and then I'm gonna go to the next part. Again, um, where my pins are. So I'm, I'm making sure that I'm grabbing both sides as I'm sewing. And with this hand, I always manipulate my fabric. Just make sure that you're using both hands. Don't let that left hand, or you know, if you're right-handed, don't let that, I mean, if you're left-handed, don't let that right hand just sit there and do nothing. But it's work. Scratching your head, doing all the other things that your right hand is too busy to do at the moment or your left hand if you're left handed. I don't want to leave the left handers out. My husband's left handed and there are so many things I never even thought about. I mean we've been married for a quite a while and um, even some things now I'm like I, I, I never thought of it. You know when you, you don't put yourself in somebody else's perspective you don't really think about what they go through with certain things. And so he was trying to cut, I'm doing my other sleeve now. He was trying to cut something with my scissors, some fabric. Well, it was a rag. He was trying to break a rag and he couldn't do it. And I'm like, what are you doing? How can you not cut? Like, it's simple. He's like, well, because these are right-handed scissors. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. That makes zero sense. What are you talking about? And so then I, um, Sure enough, I tried to cut with my left hand, and I couldn't. I couldn't with those scissors. And then I found out that there is such a thing as left-handed scissors. And 
he never uh, figured out, like, compensated for that. I don't know what he's been doing all his life, what kind of scissors he's been using, because I know I've never bought him left-handed scissors. So now I feel like, ugh, I feel so bad, you know, like, you've been compensating for everything, because he's left-handed. And his, uh, uh, things don't work the same way for left-handed and right-handed. Alright, I'm, I'm steaming this, because like I said, steaming is your best friend. I've, that's another tip that I was given, that... Um, always steam and that helps everything look just a lot more uh, put together a lot more beautiful all right now after we do that we're going to sew our sides together I'm going to put it right sides together which means inside out and we're going to go right here we're going to meet those uh, uh, armpit seams and these side seams so what we're doing is before we pin we're gonna bring this one side down to the uh, to the side right here okay here's one and then my other one comes right on top of that and goes right here so you want to make sure that they're even make sure you go ahead and pin nicely straight so that way when you're sewing it together it doesn't move out of the way and it gets it's not there anymore or you have a hole we don't want that okay so we're pinning really nicely right here and I might do an extra pin just for good measure and I'm going down this way so excited this dress is going to be bomb and I um, I teach so school is almost about to start for me so I love making simple to easy to wear dresses that they look amazing but they're super easy to wear okay again this to so this side this side was on top so the other side will be sandwiched between the two side seams okay so you want to make sure that it's nice and even there that you're gonna catch it um, and pin and then you make sure you match that armpit seam and then go out to the side and this fabric is so great uh, for that easy in the morning I'm not a morning person are you a morning person I'm not I will take forever to wake up in the morning but once I'm once I'm awake I'm like ah, and people are like uh, come down like it's still early in the morning but it's just I'm not ready to wake up but once I'm awake then I'm like okay let's party all right I'm gonna sew this up side seams together with the sleeve as well and you want to make sure that uh, when you get down here to where your uh, side is that everything's going under just right moving my pen all right um, I, I want to make sure that it's all Taking my time right there. Yeah. Good. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. What is your favorite type of fabric? Like I said, so this is like a, I think it's an ITY, which is uh, stretchy. Um, it doesn't really wrinkle. But it's thinner than um, Double Brush Folly, which I also love. It's, it's soft still, but maybe not quite as soft as Double Brush Folly because it's not as thick. 
But I feel like this has way better drape than double brush poly. No, now the double brush poly has great drape. It's like my favorite, some of my favorite fabric to work with. Um, and it's great to work with, yeah. But this I think has like a little bit, it's a little bit silkier because this is the same type of fabric, I think. It's like a, I think it's ITY. And I'm going to post information below because I know you all ask me a lot about what kind of fabric I'm using. So I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm starting to do that, try to post the, the link below. So I'll let you know below um, what it really is if it's not ITY. Um, and then, yeah. Okay, well, here we go. Oh yeah, but I do love that kind of fabric because it just, I don't know, it's great. Okay, so here it is. My bodice is done. Ooh, ooh. Now what you can do is you can go ahead and hem the sleeves. I'm not gonna do that right now because I don't wanna use up a lot of your time, but it's a quarter, I'm a half an inch allowance for the hem. Um, this is where you would do your uh, elastic, your clear elastic. What you would do is you would quarter this uh, waist and you would quarter your elastic. I have some clear elastic right here to show you. And then you would pin it right to the edge of your fabric like so, right here at the edge. And then you would zigzag stitch it on to your dress. What does the clear elastic do? So the clear elastic does not stretch a whole lot, just a tiny bit. Um, and so it helps give the dress a stability when you're wearing a skirt at the bottom You put in a skirt that's really heavy that will usually pull your dress down, you know, and give it that uh, look um, This would help keep it more stable. So it would stable it um, And not let it go all like wonky. So uh, that if you're having um, If you're doing a full skirt or the long one um, If you're using heavier material um and that is the reason why I'm not doing it because even though I'm doing a full circle skirt, which is, it's actually pretty heavy. Um, it's right here, but I'm using this fabric that is not as heavy, but if I'm, if I was using like a double brush poly that's heavier or a Liverpool or, um, scuba or something like that, definitely, you definitely, definitely, definitely want some, um, um, clear elastic. So if you want, sometimes what I'll do is before my, um, I attach the skirt, I go ahead and hem this skirt and I haven't hemmed this one. And you know what? This fabric is so cool. I, I don't know. I might leave it raw because I hate hemming so much. Um, but, um, you might want to hem, if you want to hem the skirt first, that will be fine. But if you're doing the skirt, the long skirt with the two, um, uh, sides, what you would do is you put the front and the back right sides together on top of each other and sew the sides together and then the next step will be the same as this one. If you don't have circles, same. You put it right on top of each other, the front and the back, sew the sides and this is the next step, okay? If you already have sides, you will have your two sides already marked. But since I don't, I'm gonna go ahead and mark my two sides. How I do that is, you know, it's even, so this is my two sides and then I'm gonna open it up and put the two sides together. So if you have seams, if you're doing the other versions, you will have seams. You can meet up those seams right here and then go out to one side and that's my one quarter and then go out to the other side and that's my second quarter. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with my bodice. So I have my seam already here. I'm gonna go to the back and quarter it. And then I'm gonna go to the front and quarter it. Now, if you are doing the um, the uh, uh, long skirt, just the straight skirt, gathered skirt, right now what you would do is, I, I, I do quarter it first, like I just said, but then um, you would gather the skirt. So you would use a gathering stitch and then you would gather the skirt, the width of your bodice. So you would use a gathering stitch and then you would put your bodice up like this and make sure that your skirt is gathered the width of your bodice. Like this is already like the width of our bodice so you don't have to do that. But um, with the other one it's going to be longer, wider at the waist so it's going to cinch in. So that's going to have to be done. Um, once that's gathered we're going to attach our skirt to our bodice and we're going to do right sides together. Remember the front has two layers so you need to attach two layers to the front and pin right sides together so I'm pretty basically tucking that 
out uh, bodice into my skirt. Right sides together at the side. And then right sides together at the back. And then right sides together at the other side. And then, so now like my bodice is in there tucked in and I'm gonna go ahead and sew those raw edges. You can pin a lot more if you want. I always start in the back. Um, I don't, I, I'm not huge on pinning. I'm gonna move this out of the way since I, I'm pretty much done. I mean, there's the hemming, but I'm not really planning on hemming right now. I'm gonna try it on and see what I feel like and see if I wanna hem it. And like I said, I don't wanna, uh, if this is a full circle skirt, it, hemming is gonna take a little bit of a time, a little bit of time. So I don't wanna have you sit there and watch me just hit the pedal the whole time. Even though I talk so much. You know, I always think about fast forward the dull moments, you know, like, cause you watch some of those videos and they're like, okay, now I'm going to do this. And then they like, this is the fast forward and they do it really fast. But literally, if I did that, I'd still be sitting here talking to you. As it's like going real fast, and you'll see my mouth going like this. I can't. I gotta talk to y'all. Okay, so I'm making sure that all my sides are together, and um, I'm not leaving any out, especially on the front where you have the three layers. And making sure that all your other is out of the way. Your skirt is out of the way. It would be very sad to rip a hole through the skirt at this stage in the game. Oh, shudder to think. <sighs> Put aside that thought. Put it away. I've done it before. Brings back bad memories. We are D O N E done. I just wanted to make sure that it caught everywhere and we are done. How easy was that, was that dress? It's 32 minutes and I am completely done. I did everything with you all except for the hemming. And that's it. Look how gorgeous this thing is. I can't wait to wear it. I'm going to take a picture of it so you guys can see what um, it looks like. Uh, I'm steaming the waist again if it pulls down too much I will go back and add that um, elastic clear elastic but hopefully I'll be just fine thank you all for joining me on this sew along thank you for uh, uh, putting up with me and I hope I touch a little something I'm not sure if I did but um, I can't wait to wear this dress it looks so great and I know I'm gonna make a million more I already made some other ones so um, please if you're not subscribed yet please subscribe to our channel we'd love to have you um, and we don't want you to miss any of our other videos so subscribe comment below so you can be entered for a giveaway um, number two if you are not part of our Facebook or Instagram page come join us we love to see what you're making we'd like you to see what we're making what everybody else is making so you can get inspired um, to sew even more and um, so anyway that's all I've got I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and I'll see you all next time bye guess what I did I went and tried on my dress which is amazing as you can see I love it and then what did I figure out I never made my sash and you guys want to see me make the sash don't you um, so I'm going to do it now at the end of the video as an add-on so this is an add-on if you don't want the sash you are done but if you do want the sash I'm sorry I apologize I was too busy admiring my dress and went a little bit crazy so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the two sashes we're gonna put one on top of the other and we're gonna sew this straight oh, I'm so excited this dress is amazing. Look at this. I love, I love, love, love it. I love it. And I'm going to sew this together to make it one continuous strap.
And then I'm going to, I'll go ahead and steam that right there. And then I'm gonna fold it right sides together. Right sides together. And pin. I'm gonna start at this side. And we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew down the side and coming across the, the bottom all the way down. And except for, we're going to leave, sorry, I'm moving stuff out of the way. I literally put it on and I'm like, oh, my sash, I forgot. You know what? That's okay. That's all right. Let me go ahead and steam it so that, okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go all the way down and we're gonna leave about a two inch gap to turn this baby around. So what you can do is, I don't like to do it right at the seam, and I don't like to do it right at the front, so I do it like a little bit off the seam. So like I'll do probably somewhere around here. So I'll put my pin face up, I mean sideways, and leave that gap to turn it around. This color looks so good on me. I'm sorry to say that. I know that sounds kind of weird, but it's like making me look all glowy and tan. <laughs> it's the dress, the dress is amazing. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and sew that shut. We start at the edge, go down and go over. It is thundering outside, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to get some pictures. It's, it hasn't started raining yet, but it sounds like it's going to at any minute. Alright, I'm going all the way down. And I'm going to go all the way down to where I put those pins facing up, making sure that the two ends are tell you all to be careful look at that I ate a pen good thing the head didn't jump out at me all right here we go move it all the way out and good thing it didn't break my charger that would be sad all the way down Turning it over and down. So now right here at that two inch gap that I made, I'm going to flip it over. It's like, it looks so weird right here. Like it's such an optical illusion. Like it almost looks like I have, I don't know. I really like it though. Funky. It's like a piece of art. I love it when I find great fabric. It just speaks to my soul. I saw this fabric and I knew I needed it for this dress. There's just certain fabrics that just, I'm like, I need that. That dress. And sometimes um, when I'm making something, I'm like looking through my fabric stash and I've learned lately like I have a really big fabric stash because I see fabric and I'm like <gasps> I want it but um, I've learned lately that like it's better and I've been more a little bit more cautious about this um, it's better to buy the great fabric that you think of something that you're gonna make with it for me and you know you do whatever 
if you want to do but um, I'm using this tweezers to just pull that out because you can go in with something and stretch it out but I just use the, scissor, the tweezers so now when I get right here I'm gonna grab where the two inch thing was and I'm gonna just um, close that gap with my sewing machine change it to an actually an actual stitch that was on a it was still on a uh, gathering stitch um, and so for me it's better to just buy fabric that I really love and I can think of a project then I have a bunch of fabric that is just sitting there because I'm like I don't know it's so hard for me to like see it and be like oh let's I don't know I mean it's not hard but it, it's easier when like the fabric actually speaks to me other than just grabbing fabric just for the grabbing fabric part I found that I was spending a lot of money on fabric now my shelves are full of fabric and it's all right I mean I'm gonna sew it up someday maybe all right so here's our band and it's done and now we're really done with this project that is the last touch and I am done I hope you enjoyed this sew along with a little extra added feature at the end look at how cute this is I love it I hope you have a good rest of your day and I already gave you all the other details so I'll let you go and see you next time Bye.